Hey, welcome to the shop. You know, over the years I've built several different carts for machines, a welding machine cart, a cart for my bender, and, and some others. And the nice thing about building your own is you can make it just the way that you want for whatever equipment you're using. I built this little cart today that uh, has a hopper and a bucket to catch some of the chips from my chop saw. So I'm gonna show you how I built that, but along the way I'll show you a simple three-step process to be able to build carts really simply for whatever kind of machines you have. Let's go ahead and get started. In order to build this, I picked up some inch and a quarter or 30 millimeter square tubing and sheet metal all in 16 gauge. I've cut everything to size, but I'm going to walk through in a four step process like I have laid out here, the different pieces that you'll need so you'll know what size to cut them to. The first part I need is a rectangle for the top of the frame and I'm going to go ahead and measure the chop saw that's going to sit on here to be able to build that rectangle and cut all my miters. I'm using this same chop saw. It's a unique one from Evolution Power Tools that just came out with and sent to me. It's a uh, chop saw head on a heavy duty miter saw body. Now with the pieces cut here for this top rectangle, I've created a couple of references on my fixture table. If you don't have a fixture table, you can use a fabrication square like this or even just a speed square. I've built a lot of really nice frames using nothing but a speed square, so it works fine. Once you have one corner established, one of the problems is that these miters can slide around. So marking the center is a really good thing to do to be able to line everything up. I'm just using a cheap set of calipers. It's not great for the calipers, but if you keep a cheap pair around just for this, it works fine. Then I can line up the center marks and everything aligns really well. I'm going to clamp it all down, which really will help with distortion and make any final adjustments so that everything is parallel and measure corner to corner to make sure it's square. And everything's looking really good. To avoid distortion, I'm going to start by welding the faces from the inside to the outside. After both faces, I can go ahead and weld the outside corners, saving the inner fillet welds for last. I'm going to make the lower rectangle a little bit smaller to clear this portion of the foundation and let it sit against the wall. On my welding cart, I made the bottom rectangle larger to hold the cylinders, and I made it larger on the bender cart as well, so it's pretty common to have them different sizes. I put the lower rectangle together in the same way and ground the corners to allow my uprights to be able to sit flat. Next, I just have four pieces to sit in the corners, as you'd imagine that they would. Now, it's important to get it straight in two different directions. One way to do this is to use a speed square and tack, and then switch and do the other direction. Um, since I have a fixture table with this upright reference, I'm just gonna use that for each of them, clamp it in place, and get some tack welds before I flip it over and put it onto the top. I like how things are lining up here. I'm going to start off by putting a single tack at each of the front corners and after I have both front corners tacked together I can go ahead and measure to the back to make sure that this is going to sit parallel. And with that tacked in place on both sides I can double check everything for square and it's looking really good so I'll add some additional tacks before welding it out. The basic frame is built now and it's time to turn attention to casters. There are several different types of casters. You can use some with top plates to just weld them on or on a plate, but I like these because not only do they lock the rotation of the wheel, they also lock the swivel portion using that toothed wheel underneath. So I'm going to cut some angle braces here to hold them in place and kind of share that load and just drill and tap a few holes to be able to thread them into. After a quick deburr, I can go ahead and set them in place just like you'd imagine. This is going to be pretty good to share the load, but also to allow the caster to swivel out without sticking out so far as it would if I were to put it right underneath the corner. So I like how this is fitting together. Time to weld it out. Well, everything rolls smoothly and seems pretty nice and square. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my attention to the hopper to catch some of the chips coming down off the bottom here. This has been a problem with any chop saw that I've had um, trying to collect those. And I know this won't work 100%, but it should be pretty good. Now I could probably have just as quickly cut these out by hand using a straight edge as programming them on the CNC, but uh, I just did it this way. 
A quick deburr of the dross from the plasma cutting is always a good idea before welding, even though I'm going to be MIG welding it here, and it's not quite as particular as if I were to TIG weld these corners. It's really a bit of uh, origami here to get things to fit together because you have the same problem whenever you build a shape like this that you have with that frame where things can slide side to side. So I just like to get one corner lined up up there at the top, especially since I know these all fit together pretty well. After a little bit of working with it, it all fit together nicely and I think I'll be able to weld it out without too much trouble. I'm just welding downhill using a back stitch technique where I start a little ways from the end and then work my way up. This helps to avoid distortion and keep things nice and square as I assemble this. And it came out pretty well. I'm just gonna grind the corners down a little bit for a nice smooth appearance before setting it in place. And it turns out that I'll need to clearance those corners just a little bit so that it can sit down where I want it to. I just do that with a grinder. I'm pretty happy with how this is sitting so far. Now I just need a way to catch all the chips that come down out of this big funnel. Uh, rather than fabricating some kind of metal box like I was originally planning, I just need a way to hold a bucket in place. I'm cutting a couple cross members out of some one inch or 25 millimeter square tubing that I had laying around. And then I'm going to weld on some little pieces of round bar to act as stops and hold the bucket in place. Now I'm pretty happy with how this stand turned out. I know it's not gonna be 100% on catching all the chips, but it's gonna be a lot better than if I hadn't had one before. And hopefully some of the tips that I shared here in this video will help you if you need to build any kind of custom machine stand and make it work for you. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.